from the Christy Grace Scarlet Pen. I am excited for the video today uh, because I am doing something pretty fun and with some books that I am excited to read. So I have this stack of books over here and I've decided to do something really fun and really different. This is kind of a mix of, I suppose, a couple of kind of Jack Edwards reads one line of a book videos slash Dylan is in trouble watches first episode and last episode of an entire series and I've kind of amalgamated those two things and I have decided to read the first and last chapter of these books. I haven't read any of these books yet. Um, I do know a, a little bit of a spoiler for one of them and I'll explain that in a second, but I haven't read any of these books technically as of yet. I think I've read some like of the first chapter of We Were Villains because I was just checking out the style. Um, and I do have a spoiler for When Gracie Met the Grump, which is a Mari Mariana Zapata book. Um, but for the most part, I haven't read these books, I don't know what, you know, what they're like or what the feel of them is and I thought it'd be really fun to read the first and the last chapter of them to get an idea and get a feel. You know how people are like, how can you skip to the end and find out what the end is? Well, I'm basically doing that for, for these books. So, you know, fun times. <laughs> um, so let's go. It shouldn't take that long, I would imagine. So we are going to start with When Gracie Met the Grump, which is a Mariana Zapata book. Now, I am aware I don't like books with spice in it and I am aware that the last chapter is basically only spice and so I am going to do the chapter before that instead of that chapter in terms of reading the last chapter because that I feel like will be the last part of the story part of things rather than them just like doing it. I haven't read any of her books before but I have heard about them all over booktube of course so let's get going we're going to read the first and last chapter see you in a sec. Okay chapter 1 and 32 um, have been read. Thoughts. A grumpy superhero lands in, um, the, I think, yard of someone who does not like superheroes whatsoever. Slow burn, but Mariana Zapata is the queen of, apparently, slow burn romances. Um, and so this book is about him, he's been hurt, and she has to try and look after him. Thoughts. There's a lot of swearing in this. Just a lot. I don't like swearing, I don't like reading swearing, so that's annoying. I can look past swearing though, if the story is good enough. Um, first and last chapters are tricky, because first chapters really are setups, not a huge amount of meat. However, I will say that this first chapter was pretty interesting. Um, some weird stuff where I'm like, mm, like, okay. I will say that the there are other superheroes in this uh, world and I don't like whatsoever that they call the three main superheroes, the Trinity, um, as a Christian. I think that's not great. Why would you use that word? You didn't have to. You could have used any other word you liked um, and instead of the literal way to describe the Trinity of God. Um, <laughs> that may not annoy every Christian in the world. Um, it does annoy me and that might seem silly to you but it isn't silly to me. So that was annoying, the swearing was annoying. The characters seem relatively interesting. Um, after reading the end I know a relatively big spoiler. <laughs> that was the point. Um, <laughs> I don't know what happened in between but I know what happens at the start and what happens at the end so that's the point of this video. Um, I think from where it started to where it goes at the end, I think it could be okay, but the complaints that I have heard about this book is literally the last couple of chapters is the only time when they're actually together and the rest of this freaking whopping ass book, um, they're not. And so that is a very long story where basically the two main characters are just not gonna be together. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that to be honest, but overall it seems okay. I like where the story goes in terms of character where they sort of have ended up. I like it. Um, it's kind of got Hitchcock vibes, I'm not going to lie. But yeah. So the next book we're going to do is Before Takeoff. And this is by um, Adi Al-Sayed. Al I think that's how you say it. It's a YA. See you in a sec. All I have to say about reading the first and last chapter of this book is what the frick was that? <laughs> a mysterious green light at an airport starts to cause havoc at the airport. It starts to snow indoors and miraculously um, uh, forests start to grow in a terminal. That's what the back says. 
And there is this the two people who don't know each other, two, I think they're teenagers, James and Michelle, um, who have to try and put things back to normal after hitting the green button, I guess. What the freaking heck was this? <laughs> the first chapter was written in a weird point of view where it's like, we noticed this and we can tell that these people feel these things. I'm like, this is giving alien vibes of like, aliens are watching and they're basically playing with you. I don't know that for certain because even though I technically know the end, I don't actually know the why, I just know the how. To be honest, it's so strange. Halfway through the first chapter, I wanted to give up. I was already ready to I'd be done. I don't know what this book is, but to be honest with you, I think it's it's going for mind bending, but really it's just giving ick. I'm sort of in shock a little bit for this. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I have heard backwards and forwards about this book, particularly on booktube, so let's go. So I will admit I sort of cheated a little and read a bit more. Partly because this is very oddly laid out in terms of it's not normal, like chapter one, chapter two, it's um, acts. Because this is based on theatre kids, right? Shakespearean theatre kids, okay? So it's set out sort of like act one, scene one, or like act one, prologue, um, then scene one, then scene two, and it doesn't have separation except for like a line and scene one. So I read what would essentially be two chapters on either side of this book. <laughs> 10 years ago, uh, there was a murder with some high school um, theater kids, Shakespearean theater kids, and someone went to prison for it, and the detective, 10 years later, the guy's about to get out, and the detective never believed um, the story and he wants to know the truth. I like the writing. It's a little, <laughs> this is like a dark academia book, right? So it's a little bit, you know, pretentious, but it's fun. Um, I do like the additions of, you know, like the Shakespearean lines. They're all very dramatic. Um, I do like that. <laughs> Uh, the whole, like, murder, m sort of half mystery, I suppose, on what really happened. Um, totally up my alley, normally. Um, look, it's okay. Uh, I don't actually know that I'm gonna read it. Now I know the beginning and the end. I'm not sure if this is gonna be a book I'm gonna read. Um, sometimes when you read the beginning and then you read the end, it's like, oh, well, now I don't have to read the rest of it. And then sometimes you read the beginning and the end, you're like, now I want to read the rest of it. This is a, I don't know that I will, which I suppose is the point of this video, to be able to actually see if I genuinely want to continue to read these few books that I had on my pile. So yeah, mixed thoughts. I do like the style and I think the writing was great. Next one, there's only two left. So this one is called The Witnesses and it is by Robert Whitlow. I'm excited to read this book, I really am. So let's go. Alrighty, so The Witnesses. Um. This is a book about a lawyer who uh, is gifted to see into the future. <laughs> Fun times. It is a Christian fantasy book um, and essentially there is something to do with his family's past that is potentially going to uh, ruin uh, his legal career and um, make a big to-do. Um, I believe there's also some romance thrown in here as well. Um, now I will say, so the first four chapters, three or four chapters, are looking f in 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 the past, like in the 40s, to do with World War II. That's the first four chapters. So in the chapter that I read, I didn't actually get to meet the main character in this book. Well, one of the main characters, I suppose, uh, in this book. Um, but uh, and I did get to see in the last chapter. I saw sort of the end and the wrap up, right? So. Um, whereas the, uh, if we were villains, I read the beginning and the end and thought, I actually don't need to read the middle. This is a different story. I read the beginning and the end and I do want to read the middle. I want to know the rest of this story. I want to find out a little bit more about this legal case. I love a good legal thriller and this is like thrown in fantasy splashed in the middle, um, which is amazing. Um, and I am really impressed. Like, I haven't read a good Christian fiction for a while and this has some really cool um, elements in it. I'm actually like super excited to read this book, I'm not gonna lie. So this is, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this. Legal thriller meets Christian fantasy, like 
where else would you go wrong with that? Like, amazing. Okay, and the last book is called A Fatal Finale, and it's by Kathleen Marple Cobb. One sec, I'll be right back. Okay, A Fatal Finale. Um, so this book is about an actress in, I think, when is it? When is this book set? 1899, so historical fiction. Not my wheelhouse, but I did pick it up because it sounded interesting. A woman who is uh, known for playing male roles on stage is doing a Romeo and Juliet play, and the woman who is playing, I think, Juliet, dies on stage. Uh, it is ruled an accident, but several weeks or months later, a mysterious, I think, duke uh, shows up and thinks that it was actually a murder, and our main character uh, is trying to help him decipher what happened. Was it a murder, and if it was, who killed this uh, woman? So that's the gist of the story. I, again, I'm not a huge historical fiction person, but, I mean, look, the, it's set with actors and theatre-y and... It might be fun. I have this ready to go in audiobook format, and I think that listening to it on audiobook will be a lot more interesting. I'll be able to focus a lot more, especially with historical fiction. I do want to go on this journey and figure it all out, but it is something that I don't know if I'm going to like it enough to keep it. I just don't know that I'll be all that connected to it. It could surprise me. Some historical fictions surprise me, and some don't. They don't win. I just read recently uh, The Seamstress. That was a book that was set in Marie Antoinette time and I didn't like it at all and I DNF'd it about halfway. So, you know, um, historical fictions are so-so with me. It depends. It depends on the hook you've got for me. I've read the beginning and the end. Now all we have to do is read the middle. <laughs> I don't know if you have read any of those books, but if you have and you don't agree with my thoughts or you have insights into why the books are amazing or rubbish, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I have reading to do, so I'll see you guys in the adventures.